Hello out there, sports fans. Welcome to our podcast today, The Brand and the Source. This is Coach EJ, The Brand. This is Coach Aaron, The Source. EJ, what's on tap for us today? Hey, we got a cool subject. It's going on pretty uh, prevalent right now with college coaches right now. It's the issue of what happens if you get decommitted? You know, you're a junior or you're a senior. You know, what, ha- what happens now, Aaron? I mean, it's a... I mean, if you're a senior, man, it's like, wow, you know, I had this commitment, this scholarship offer, and now it's being taken away from me because the school is deciding to go in another direction. That's the subject today. Yeah, it's that, uh, yes, in the old old days, those old terms, uh, it's the Dear John letter, soldier boy. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I- Someone else to date. Uh, it's not. It's not. It's not you. It's me. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's like hello. But guess what? <laughs> this is what's happening. Yeah. And it's crazy. Interesting. Uh, because again, we, we talked about this before um, with the, the transfer portal and athletes being able to move around the way they can. It seems like it's uh, ever changing landscape. And right. everyone's uh, reserving the the ability to change their minds. Uh, we hear a lot about it with athletes on their side decommitting, but we don't also hear about when the institutions <laughs> say, "Hey, you know what? It's not going to work." So I think it's it's a good subject because it, it happens I, it happens you know more often than not. Again, we just see one side of it. So yeah, let's let's delve into it. Yeah, what are some of your your thoughts on it? Well, Aaron, right now it's you know like you said the transfer portal in baseball. If we just talk about baseball, and this happened in all the sports by the way, because I was asking Haley Breakwell, one of our associates, uh, Aaron, about how. How is the transfer portal affecting her business and softball training? And what are her athletes saying? And they're basically saying the same thing. It's like, you know, it's a one-year contract and, you know, which it is anyway. And people seem to be bouncing around like it's no big deal. And some of her girls are getting decommitted from, you know, choices that they had out there, you know, that they thought were, you know, pretty guaranteed spots. But because they uh, colleges can go look at a more experienced athlete at that level who has some sort of uh, track record or credibility that they rather go ahead and do that and get that person who's been in college for a year or two maybe not have been a starter somewhere but they get them at a, at a school and all of a sudden you know here am i going to take a freshman that's incoming versus an experienced college player and it's free it's it's the wild wild west it's free agency so the universities are now saying you know what hey i'm gonna decommit some of these seniors that these uh freshmen that are coming into our university in a year and they're and they're doing it and this is this is how it is and i think um i i tell all athletes that do you know have a commitment early is that the work just begins is beginning now. Once you get your commitment and it can be early, whether it's your, you know, before the deadline of this year, uh, April 26, 2023. And they said, hey, listen, you know, you got to stop your recruiting. If you had a commitment before then, it, the work just starts. And then if you're a junior and you just got a commitment and you said, hey, I'm committed to this university. Your work is only beginning. So this decommitment commitment thing is gonna be ongoing, Aaron. And my, my initial thoughts are the work is just now beginning for those who are people who are committed. And it's just part of the landscape right now. Those are just my initial early thoughts about it. Part of the landscape. Well, I have a question. What do you think, um, is it more likely they're they're obviously it seems more likely that they're decommitting a lot of the upperclassmen, so you know, mm-hmm. seniors and not kids that they're getting to commit at in the ninth grade. Right. Uh, they've got time to see if they pan out. Mm-hmm. Uh, again, nothing is is guaranteed. So 
I mean, what do you think an athlete can do to, I guess you can't insulate yourself from this, but, you know, maybe let's discuss some strategies to, to, to rebound from this sort of, you know, call. And, and should athletes already just have a plan B or a school plan, a school B in place just in case? I mean, do they keep lines of communication open or do they, you know, I don't know if that's against NCAA rules, you know, to, to still be talking to other schools or, you know, up to the point where it's time to go off. Right. Uh, or I don't, or I don't know, again, what, what strategies maybe some of these athletes and parents can employ at least, Hey, okay, we're decommitted. This is what we need to do now. What's maybe some steps that they can take um, so that they can find another school. Well, the first thing I always say, when you do commit, don't burn bridges because you never know what's going to happen. What if you do get decommitted? So the first thing I would say, if you do get, you know, committed, don't burn bridges and always do it in a professional manner. And that will always keep your doors open if you do get decommitted. Right. So that would be the first thing. The second thing is that, you know, you're in a very short window. If we're looking at baseball, Aaron, right now, um, I believe that um, schools can go out and see athletes till October the 9th this year. So, my antidote or my my conclusion to this is that parents you may have to go out and go to some team uh go to universities and go to their prospect camps you know or or get in front of them that's the best thing you can do um right now is to get in front of those people that maybe you had a relationship with or maybe some new uh situations that you can go to so that would be one thing is go out there Fine, if these universities have some prospect camps that they're looking to add players, then I would go do that. But I get in contact. The other thing was get in contact with prospective schools and ask, are you looking for my me, that type of player that I could, you know, be to help your university? Uh, I would I would get in contact with those schools immediately and ask them, are you still recruiting a pitcher? Are you still recruiting a catcher, a shortstop, whatever position you play is, I think that's a good strategy is to get on the phone. Don't send an email. You know, you send emails, they go right to the baseball operations person and probably get stuck in their email somewhere or it gets sent to the head coach and head coach doesn't have time looking at it. So I would definitely make a phone call. I think that's your best recourse of action. I would also say, um, reach out to other people that have influence in the industry that could help you, maybe guide you and give you some other suggestions to, you know, or contacts that could help you find the right place to go to at that. Does it fit for me academically? Stuff like that. So I, I get some people that have some really good knowledge about doing that. And there are people out there that, that do have that knowledge. So I tell parents that. Um, the third thing, Aaron, I think is to, first of all, take a deep breath and, and don't like, what's wrong with me? I think you need to slow down and think, okay, listen, I got decommitted. I need to move forward. I need to move past this and get through this and not kind of wallow for two, three or four weeks because those two or or four weeks are very important. You need to be on this right away because your window is very short. So I think that those are my initial first three things that I would do um, to to move forward uh, after I've gotten decommitted. Okay. No, I think those are all great. You're basically saying, hey, you know, keep that list of of plan B schools. Uh, Keep those relationships open and be gracious when you're turning those you know those offers and then the other thing is keep that calendar be aware of uh, the baseball calendar and when these events are going are going because again like you said you can you can commit and then be like okay well i'm off to bigger and better things right something like this happens it can catch you on your heels and so you still have to be aware of what's happening on the baseball calendar to say, hey, we've still got time to participate in this event, this event, and that event, which is which is a good strategy. And um, 
you know, so I, I think those are some really good key points. Um, and, you know, it's, it's once you commit, we always say, hey, get ready for the next level. So, mm -hmm. you know, I guess that's a given, you know, you should always be ready. So maybe say, call it always be ready to interview. <laughs> that's great. You have a, a, a great cushy job. Uh, it doesn't hurt to always be ready to interview for another opportunity, a better opportunity or, you know, the one that you, the opportunity that you lose. So I think that sort of mindset is good. And then again, uh, don't let, like you mentioned, don't let it break your confidence. You know, it necessarily isn't a, a personal slap. A lot of these are strategic and financial decisions by these institutions. Right. And, you know, taking it personal doesn't really get you anywhere. Um, maybe use it as, <laughs> you know, that chip on your shoulder and you want to go out and prove, you know, prove them wrong, um, that they made a mistake in decommitting to you. Uh, but the key is, you know, I guess the key takeaway is always be moving forward. Yeah. And Aaron, a lot of times in these institutions decommit an athlete, it does have a lot to do with financial stuff because maybe they needed to bring in another position that was lacking the year before and it needs to be strong over the next two years and they need somebody now yeah okay so that that's one thing and the second thing i always i i like to mention is that um athletes need to continue to to, to not only work but to understand the needs of that university and to keep in, in, in communication with the university. I think a lot of kids get committed and they go out, okay, I got committed my sophomore year and here I'm going through my junior year and senior year, part of seniors, and this is fun and I'm having a good time. And they forget about developing and progressing during that year and a half or two years before they get on the college campus. And it's just like, they're happy because they got committed instead of putting their head down and working it. And I think universities see that. Mm -hmm. And that's why they decommit a lot of athletes. It's like, this guy's not panning out the way we thought they would progress. And that's why they get decommitted, yeah. you know, unfortunately. Before, yeah. Um, like you said, these kids, they sit on the laurels, I guess, per se. And especially if you're an early commit, these these coaches are going to want to see year to year development. If you look like the same kid they did when you committed in the ninth grade, and it's the and you're in the eleventh grade, uh, you know that's right. going to say something. And and so uh, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And I guess one of the takeaways from what you were saying too is is monitor their roster because their needs change. And if you're you know again you're a ninth grade or 10th grade commit or whatever and you're playing catcher then all of a sudden you see that they've they've signed two or three more catchers you know in the, in the coming years that may have three or four years eligibility mm -hmm. you know that might say something to you you know are they still really committed to you who's still two three years out or hey have they kind of you know set their plate for that position now and it's just a matter of them giving you the call so you know yeah i would think monitoring their their recruitment process would be or their roster would be a uh, an indirect way of staying informed and maybe reading the tea leaves right <laughs> definitely you know uh, another subject i think we might want to talk about is that once you get your commitment you know, what are you, what should you be doing? That's, that's, that's in the future, people. If you listen to that. I think that would be a good podcast for us. You know, we're, we're going down this road so you, you don't get decommitted. So, you know, I think those are some good points, some valid points today, Aaron, about, uh, you know, decommitted athletes and what they should do. All right. No, I agree. Good stuff, EJ. Okay, bud. Well, hey, like you said, uh, this is the brand and the source. This is Coach EJ, the brand. Coach Aaron, the source. We'll see you.